Hi, this is book 12, part 5. After a kill was a thrill, an exhilaration. We parted ways with Kell at the Imperial, and Maze and I went and found a rooftop where we could sit together and take in the city night and hear the wailing of the ambulance gone to pick up another cold one. The man who thought life had him trapped pretty good, and that he would never amount to nothing, tethered like that to his girl and his mom, the only two people who loved him, who devoted himself to the art of absentia, scared he would lose the chance to be somebody, when all he ever had, he left behind in the apartment. And look at him now. I was sure that's who they were going for, the paramedics, because Mays left him there in the alley to be found. I wasn't sad about the bottom feeder. Looking at Mays, I saw the heat he saw in me, the light, the incubating energies we had drawn. The only ones I felt anything for were the dude's mom and girlfriend. Maybe I could bring them some flowers. Wow, was I heartless or what? What was happening to me? Was I becoming jaded like Bless and Freddy? I wondered, holding Maze's hand as we stepped along the top surrounding edge of a nondescript building off of Broadway, walking the line up there to count the stars. Planets blazed in a certain clarity in the sky, and Venus had a hold of us as we laughed, and Maze traced a finger around my ink and told a tale about the unraveling stream of light inside of us, and I nodded my head, go on. Go on. And then he gave me my turn after the light was coming through the gaps in his teeth and from his throat and out his eyes up from his spine and pooled in footfalls on the roof. I did my level best to describe the light's arrival from within and grip his skin, the shadows all below us from this height. We drank bottles of red stripe and smoked real cigarettes, not those damn vape pens the kids are all into anymore, just for kicks, and he messed up my hair. We would not settle down, no. We could do anything with this fresh kill feeling. <laughs>